All right, so with uh, Anthony Harris finally signing the franchise tag, I thought we'd go over some things. So obviously some basic stat work here. Uh, he had six interceptions, 11 pass deflections, was targeted 23 times, allowed 15 completions, 65.2%. For 151 yards, didn't allow a score, allowed a quarterback rating of 44.2 when throwing at him, 60 total tackles with 35 of those solo and one tackle for loss so the tag itself is worth you know, around 11.4 million dollars it's like the exact is 11.4 for one I think so what's the next chapter here because a lot of people will be like well why hasn't he signed a long term extension why wasn't he traded or is this kind of an indication that he will get traded and honestly, I think the ability to trade him came and went on day two of the draft. Um, there were a lot of rumors that said Harris would get somewhere between 13 to $16 million a season on the open market. Um, and that would place him anywhere from one to six on that ever so, you know, that, that top paid list. Um, Eddie Jackson's currently the highest per season average at 14.6 mil. So, and no team wants to pay that contract plus giving up a two or a three. And then, you know, some might be like, well, why not take less for Harris if you're already just trying to trade him? Um, well, kind of glad you asked if you have. Um, that contract that he will sign next year if he were to be a undraft, oh, whoa, an unrestricted free agent again for, you know, and they don't sign him. That's going to easily net Minnesota a th compensatory third round pick. So why would they take any less than a three? They wouldn't. So it's kind of why that hasn't happened. But I think with how things have played out, I don't think trading Anthony Harris helps them now because, well, you have no way to replace him, really. And you could have looked at that like maybe in the second round they would have been like kind of for the idea of well if we can trade him for a two then all of a sudden maybe you trade Anthony Harris and then you can get cheaper and younger with like a Grant Delpit or an Antoine Winfield who knows but when that kind of came and went I don't think Minnesota had many options here to actually trade him because now you have a bunch of new corners I don't think you want new safeties as well and so just given the route that's happened, I doubt they trade him now. And so then we get to this other part of why hasn't he been signed to the long-term extension? And that answer could very likely fall in the form of Harrison Smith. And that sounds a little weird to some, I think. But Harrison is 31 and is a free agent after 2021. But, you know... Before that, you know, before that season happens, Minnesota could cut him and save $10.25 million against the cap. And I only bring this up because Harris is already 28 years old. So he's already approaching that kind of, that, that age, that 30 mark that nobody really likes to have. So it probably would be wise to not have two safeties in their 30s on super expensive deals and so overall what do I think will happen um I think one of two things has happened with only one thing certain and that is that 2020 will be the last season in Minnesota for one of these two players and so if Harrison Smith shows decline, they can cut him and they can end up re-signing Anthony Harris. If Harrison Smith doesn't show decline, they have a little bit of a decision between, well, we have this younger safety who gets us interceptions, but this guy's also our defensive leader. So it's going to be kind of a, you know, it's going to be an interesting choice, but my guess is Harrison Smith would survive that as opposed to, uh, you know, Anthony Harris. So it is what it is, but that would be my guess, not necessarily what I want to see happen, 
just kind of what I think will happen here. And I'd like to know your guys' comments down below. Like and subscribing. Super helpful. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.